in the group when we are talking about Airbnbs, which is like the next generation of real estate investing. So we want to focus this on short term rentals, the Airbnbs, the VRBOs. We want to get as much information as so, possible. So when somebody is considering buying, they have to be aware of first the HOA rules. Yeah. I know even in real estate, we always get national news, but I know real estate is hyper local. That's why we have to wait through all this. News. So, is so Airbnb saturated in Scottsdale, Chandler, Gilbert, Peoria, like those areas? Do you think it's saturated anywhere? So, if there is a neighbor who's an attorney, he doesn't have any expense, he can sue you right. and make your life miserable. So, make sure you check for the CCNRs. When we are preparing this, okay, let's say we acquired the property, now we are preparing it. Right. So, did you use like a professional stager to kind of get all your stuff together, or how did you do it? Right. Uh, I, I buy for life. You, you are buying for life. Yeah. That's, that's very good. And so, now, we want to focus this on short-term rentals. So, they, they all have licensing, though, right? Scottsdale yes. has it. Tempe has it. Yeah. So, for Airbnb, for the same unit in Scottsdale, we are talking County Island. How much the gross will be? Srinath, I'm so excited to have you come by our studio. First thing is we have a lot, lot of things in common. You, I mean, I know I've, uh, I've known you for more than 20 years. We both went to ASU. We both worked at Intel and you are the one first who quit Intel and showed way for many people like me. You got inspired and even I decided to quit Intel. <laughs> so I know you've gone through a lot of ups and downs. You learned a lot. So. How do you describe yourself or introduce yourself to people who probably have never run into you? Well, um, that's a tough question, I guess. Let's see. How do I describe myself? My goal was not to work for anybody. So that's how I got started. And um, my goal was, the second goal was how to do the least amount of work. <laughs> so <laughs> That's uh, a very, very good goal to have. Yeah, so I worked towards that. And, uh, and I found out that the easiest and the least amount of work would be to rental properties. And uh, I wanted to buy. And the only way to do it is because you don't know which way the market is going to go, you keep buying every year. Oh my God. So, and with less leverage so that you don't have to go down with the market. I stuck to that. That's very good because when you started, I don't think anybody in our community really even considered low income properties or uh, uh, apartment complexes. People just didn't know about it and there was no YouTube, no courses, nothing. And at that time, you were the one who went and bought like a fourplex. I remember the first one that you bought yeah. was a duplex or fourplex, right? Yeah, it was a triplex. Actually. It was a triplex. Yeah. And in those days, like it, it was shocking or revealing <laughs> saying, how did Sridhar buy it? But you did it and then your success story is, is, is very, very impressive to me because I am totally into real estate and then I see that you are able to slowly build it up. So you graduated from buying a triplex, then you bought some single family residential. Now you live in a beautiful custom home, yet you are still clinging on to a lot of your rental properties. Right. I, I buy for life. You, you are buying for life. Yeah. That's, that's very good. And now from that, in the group, when we are talking about Airbnbs, which is like the next generation of real estate investing, wherein a lot of us haven't uh, really tried that. So we want to focus this on short-term rentals, the Airbnbs, the VRBOs. We want to get as much information as possible. So first, I want to get your opinion on compare and contrast, single family residential, apartments, these triplex, triplexes and the short-term rentals. What are the benefits and cons of that? Okay, um, short-term rentals are more like a business. Uh, it, it does involve a lot of work. It is uh, not like renting a home. I mean, the least amount of work is single-family homes. Even no matter what neighborhood it is in, um, that's the least amount of work. And um, as far as short-term rentals are concerned, it is uh, a lot of work. 
So I would say it's more like a business. So it is like a business. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask because it's not like single family wherein you can give it to a property manager and forget about it. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not right. No. So people who have tried to do short term rental with a property manager, I have not heard any any uh, positive news. They all get frustrated. Right? Is, yeah, that, is they, that true? They take 30% usually. Uh, 30% ma management fees. Okay. So that's why there's no more money left if you give it to management company. So the ideal way is you get into Airbnb thinking it's a business. It's not an investment anymore. It's an active business. Then you have to do it yourself. If you're going to pay 30% to property management, then that, that's, that's profit that you're definitely giving out. Then what are the negatives? Obviously, the, the vacancy is very stressful, right? Um, no, vacancy is not stressful. Uh, the negatives uh, or, or the stressful thing is the reviews. Reviews. The, so People just drop in yeah. a negative review. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like, uh, you know, a restaurant where, you know, you work so hard and uh, people come, it seems like your your guests, your customers are coming only to criticize you and not to praise you. Um, so, this is kind of similar. Right. Um, How about the city rules and the HOA rules? Like, in my community, they passed a resolution now not to allow Airbnbs. It just passed like la last month. The reason it passed is one of the neighbors complained about the airbnb because there was a lot of traffic since it's a lake open area people were playing music all the time and it was such a nuisance so the hoa sent out a letter saying you need to vote and we all voted we said no and then they passed a resolution that airbnbs are not allowed in our community anymore yeah in in my community the resolution failed failed okay <laughs> they allow airbnbs now. okay so, so so when somebody is considering buying they have to be aware of first the hoa rules yeah Right. First, you have to get permission from your spouse that you are going to get into this new business. <laughs> then you go to the HOA. <laughs> then we expand it to the city. The cities also have started to add new rules. With Scottsdale, they added one wherein you, you tell me what you have your Airbnbs in Scottsdale, right? Yes. Um, so Airbnb short-term rentals are very profitable. So everybody should try to do one, in my opinion. Um, and the best way to start is uh, look in uh, county islands in oh. county islands you have uh, good properties and uh, you have uh, certain uh, hoa con condominium uh, communities that allow it so focus on those so now scottsdale what they did is um, they passed this uh, resolution where the owners of uh, the short-term rental are supposed to uh, do background check on the tenant on the guest and so to stop uh, to make sure they're not sexual offenders. Oh, okay. So, or sex offenders. So, that is a big thing. I think nobody has time to, you know, do all the, I mean, hotels don't do it. Right, right. So, why would you do it? So, they almost don't want Airbnbs. That's why they put They're this. just trying to make it difficult for, yeah, yeah. for landlords to do that. So, they, they, they all have licensing though, right? Scottsdale yes. has it, Tempe has it. Yeah. Licensing yeah. is wherein you just have to register yourself. Right. That way, if the police gets called, they pull up the database and they should be able to call you in the middle of the night saying, yes. hey, there is this problem. So they want a point of contact. That's just licensing. Right. Now, the background checks is something that I've never heard of. So, yeah. So, oh, Sedona doesn't have that. Only Scottsdale has it. Okay. Um, so, and that's why it is, they're making it more and more difficult. However, I, what, I, what I see happening is probably Airbnb and uh, VRBO might come up with the automatic check. Right, like uh, Zillow has it right now for tenants when they apply, yeah, we can yeah. automatically so, do that. Right, right, that. So, Airbnb might come up with a way where when you register as a guest, they will ask your permission, can we do a background check? And if you, if you allow them, they will give you a higher rating. Like all the guests have ratings too in Airbnb and VRBO. So, they probably will, you know, say that this is a verified guest. Right. So, okay. then you can lower your guard and uh, rent it to them. Before we go too deep into this, I want to talk about uh, the rents, right? Let's say hypothetically we are able to get $2,000 rent for a condo, which is 24,000 gross, right? After all expenses, let's say we are we are able to net maybe 15,000, 15, like 7,000 for AC repairs, whatever, vacancy and all that. So 15,000, that's an example I'm giving. So for Airbnb, for the same unit in Scottsdale, we are talking county island, how much the gross will be if you are getting 
24,000 per, per year, what is the gross that we might expect to get for Airbnb? Is it times 2? Uh, yeah, yeah. Times, two. times 3 or times well, 2? Well, it, it mostly it will be times 2. Times 2, yeah. okay. Um, but the positive thing is sometimes you can uh, jack up the rent quite a bit during the special events okay. in those special months. In those months, you might make more. Um, but usually, uh, you can expect to make double. Double overall, even considering summer and the slow times also, you think for the entire year, it will be almost double. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, the surprising thing is in summers, a lot, lot of different kinds of people come for Airbnb. Mostly what I noticed is uh, in Scottsdale, you have a lot of uh, health tourism. Health, okay. So they people come, to come Mayo Clinic or Mayo Clinic, Yeah, so they want to come and um, they, and a lot of these treatments last for a month and uh, they want a kitchen at that time. So, and they look for Airbnbs okay. and, um, and then uh, work related people, a lot of work related people come and uh, they want Airbnbs. So, so the news that we heard about Airbnbs being saturated, I know even in real estate, we always get national news, but I know real estate is hyper local. That's why we have to wade through all this news. So is Airbnb saturated in Scottsdale? Chandler, Gilbert, Peoria, like those areas. Do you think it's saturated anywhere? Uh, it may be saturated in uh, Chandler or Gilbert because there is nothing special in Chandler and Gilbert going on. So people don't come here for vacation. So most Airbnbs in Chandler and Gilbert, uh, I would say, uh, don't attract uh, the travelers. They are they attract people who come for an event, you know, uh, event based where if there is a wedding here. You know those kind of events right but in scottsdale you have travelers and vacationers and all those people so i would say you have to own airbnb in, in the cities that have a lot of transient uh, transient and then even though scottsdale is mandating you to do background check and all that it will be worth it because even if you get another tenant for a week i mean that's going to cover it for the year all the pain with the background check and all that right so so gross we are talking double in terms of regular concierge and all that, I mean, you have a good setup. You have employees and you have people who pick up your phone. But for a lot of investors who own one odd homes, how are they going to manage this? Like, the, especially the concierge, how, like, the, is there a lot of automation? Because I've rented an Airbnb in Florida recently and it, it was completely automated. That guy gave me a code. I was able to go in and I never had to call that guy. Before, yeah. it, I, you, there was a lot of manual stuff, but looks like the Airbnb hosts have also automated a lot of this stuff. Yes, uh, so there is no more signing a lease and uh, all, but some people are still signing leases with Airbnb. It depends on the county and the rules, but um, I take the calls myself on, on the short term rentals. So I manage them myself, but none of my staff are involved in it. Um, it's not complicated at all because you get a request but that's, that's one of the things I want to cover in this, where what kind of a listing, there are different kinds of listing. Okay, so, so explain to me. So, so first explain to me about properties in county islands that we want to search for. So when you're on the MLS, you search for properties that are in county island. Or how do you identify those properties? Yes, as long as they're not, you know, part of a the city, there will be a county island property. And um, you still... Um, just being on a county island doesn't guarantee uh, that you can do uh, Airbnb. There may still be CCNRs. Uh, okay, they, it might still be part of HOA. So we have no. To, there will be no HOA. Just the CCN. But there. Okay, explain to me all yeah. this because I've never. So done what anything. happens is uh, in a county island, um, you can uh, let's say you own ten acres and you divide it up into ten lots on a county island. So you can put CCNRs in there, saying that okay, these are CCNRs governing these lots but there's nobody to enforce them. Oh, okay. okay. So if the CCNR say you cannot do short term rental, you cannot do it, but there's nobody to enforce it. However, your neighbor can sue you. So company. neighbors can sue na neighbors when they are CCNR. So if there is a neighbor who's an attorney, he doesn't have any expense, he can sue you right. and make your life miserable. So make sure you check for the CCNRs. And, uh, and also on the MLS, when we are searching for it, of course, we can search it by town. Is there one wherein we can search by the whether it's in a county? No, I've never used it. 
let's see there is yes um no i yeah i don't i don't remember how to search it for on the county island but there must be a way uh, jurisdiction usually jurisdiction is where it says uh, city jurisdiction or county jurisdiction right okay so, um, okay so th that is identifying the property the best way to identify is obviously you talk to a real estate agent you say you want to use it for airbnb that's the intent during the inspection period you go through the cc and rs you go through the city rules what are the latest lot of times the realtors don't know because there is lot of things that are changing right and then uh, we are going to roll it to another episode because there is so much to talk we are going to talk about filing your taxes and also some tips on how to actually pick airbnbs how to handle laundry and also insurance claims and how to use wifi and technology to make sure that tenants are clamped down so we'll see you on the other side